Hey, okay, hi everybody, sorry about that. Uh, welcome to the Industry Spotlight Freelancing for Paizo panel. Um, uh, allow me to introduce myself. I am Eric Mona. I am the Chief Creative Officer at uh, Paizo. That means that I am uh, the head of the editorial operation, the creative team that produces Pathfinder and Starfinder. Um, and I am thrilled to have an opportunity to join you today with an illustrious group of Paizo developers to talk about freelancing for Paizo. Um, before we get into the introductions for the rest of the panel, I did want to uh, take a moment to just uh, acknowledge that it's been a challenging week for us here at Paizo this week. And um, I really, one of the things that has uh, helped out, I know the members of the staff and, and me also, is just how much support our freelancers who are so important to Paizo overall have shown toward the developers that they work with on a daily basis. Um, that means a lot to the developers. Um, and I just wanted to, from the very top, thank everyone for that. Um, it's really been a, a great thing to see that level of support um, kind of at all levels of our creative operation, whether it's inside or outside the house. And I really, really do appreciate that. You know, that being said, I know a number of our existing freelancers have some concerns about the company and about the company's values, um, you know, in light of some of the stuff that uh, has been in the Zeke Geist in the last few days. And speaking as one of the um, executives at the company i can say you know that we i have definitely been hearing those concerns and we're taking them very seriously and been having a lot of discussions and will be communicating more in the days and weeks to come you know i think it's not just a a one size fits all solution for any of this stuff as with everything at a company it's a it's an ongoing process and we're never kind of where we need to be um it will always need to be working to be better but one thing that i can say um from not just uh the editorial side of the business but from the entire business is that paizo is deeply deeply um, dedicated to issues of inclusion and diversity. And I think that you can see that pretty clearly in the products that we make and in the decisions that get shepherded by many of the people in this panel, but also the entire um, creative team at Paizo. Um, and, you know, speaking as one of the executives of the company, uh, I and my colleagues will endeavor as best we can to show that that commitment is not just at the creative level, but is in fact at all levels of the company. So I don't want to just roll into the panel and, and gloss over any of that stuff. I know it's very important and we've been talking about it pretty much constantly all week. And I just wanted to thank uh, both the developers and the freelancers for the, the, uh, you know, unity that they have shown over the last few days, very helpful. And uh, there will be more to come. So um, with that having been said, I, I do want to shift the topic uh, to uh, the the topic of the panel at hand, which is the freelancing for Paizo. And uh, we have gathered an illustrious group of Paizo developers to discuss that very topic. And uh, I'm going to step back for a minute and allow them to introduce themselves. Why don't we start with Linda? Hi, I'm Linda Zeiss Palmer. I am a development manager at Paizo. Um, I work with the digital adventures team. We make um, Pathfinder and Starfinder society scenarios, bounties, and we are rolling into producing one shots as well. All right. Hi, I'm um, Louis we... Loza. Yeah, hi, I'm Louis Loza. I am a developer on the Pathfinder side of things. I work specifically on the Lost Omens line of books. I also help out with development here and there with Adventure Pass and, and other stuff that comes up. And yeah, uh, I, I love working with all the freelancers that we do. So I'm excited to tell more people how to become a freelancer so I get to work with you more and, and get to enjoy all the creativity that, that everyone brings uh, to our, our wonderful products. Jason? Hi, uh, I'm Jason Keeley, uh, Starfinder's development, ma development manager. Uh, you know, I work on the Starfinder side of things. Uh, we uh, have uh, all kinds of good books and we always need, you know, we're always looking to get more uh, diverse voices uh, and uh, freelancers into the into the pool so we can tell these cool uh, space stories. Okay. All right. So I know from taking a sneak peek into the chat that there's a number of our existing freelancers watching the panel, but I know that there's very likely a number of folks watching the panel who have not 
uh, written for us or maybe indeed for anyone uh, professionally before. So I think a really good place to start the panel about freelancing for Paizo is developers, how do you start freelancing for Paizo? Hmm. Hmm. I, I just like to tell people to start writing down something. It doesn't ever have to be sent off to a company. It doesn't have to, uh, you know, be 100% tip top shape or anything like that. But the moment you start writing is the moment you start getting that practice in for hopefully eventually your, 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 your first actual uh, products that you're going to write for. And what you can do with this writing is use one of the countless resources on the internet, uh, start a blog or, or something, and just throw that writing up there, put it somewhere. Because once you have some kind of writing in place, you have a portfolio that you can use to then go reach out to companies like Paizo or some of our third party, uh, third party partners to show like, look, here's what I can do. And here's the stuff I like to do. Maybe you're interested in, in having me write for you. Nice. Okay, um, let's see, uh, burp, 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 two seconds here. Um, all right, so one thing I wanted to, to, anyone else have anything to add before I jump in? Yeah, um, I would say also that um, if you have experience playing and GMing RPGs, that experience is, is incredibly valuable for writing for them as well. Um, sharing, the, sharing these sorts of stories that you have with, with everybody else. Um, and everybody really comes to storytelling with their own perspective. And this is something that uh, we talked a, lo a lot more about in the diversity panel. Uh, I recommend <laughs> checking that out. But um, everybody has their own story. And by bringing together people with diverse voices, we tell such a broader tapestry that makes it, I mean, games really are a way for us to connect with each other and to experience a little bit of a window into a different way of seeing the world. So if you're thinking, you know, I don't know if if I should write for Paizo, I don't know if like, you know, if my voice would be valuable. It is. Yeah, I mean, very well said. Uh, uh, the company has had increasingly uh, a wider array of voices of people working for it and doing freelance for it. That's not just Paizo, that's the whole industry. And in the in the last 20 years uh, that I've been in this crazy business, uh, what we've seen is that when you involve more diverse voices at the all levels of production of the, the material, it makes more people feel welcome at the table and want to be a part of the community. And so the Pathfinder community now is far more diverse than it has been in the past. That's true also of other, you know, major RPGs. And that's good for everybody. You know, it just means that everybody can have a place at the table and that's super, super important. Um, one thing I wanted to throw in uh, that, uh, you know, we'll talk a little bit about, okay, so I, I, I've been writing every day. I've got great ideas. I've got interesting experiences that I think I can put into some material that's going to be really engaging. And then what do I do about, you know, actually reaching out to a dev and getting, you know, hooked into kind of the, the production process at Paizo. And the, uh, these folks have a lot to say about that. But but one thing that I wanted to point out that I think is going to be a really, really amazing opportunity um, that we just announced earlier this week are a couple of programs called Pathfinder Infinite and Starfinder Infinite. And you can go now to pathfinderinfinite.com or starfinderinfinite.com and it will give all the details about how to, to do it. It's basically a self-publishing program that allows you to use our worlds, our planets from Starfinder, our ancestries from, you know, the world of Lost Omens, the the, the, the countries and things from Galarian uh, to create your own stories. And that could be anywhere from like literal stories like fiction to hand done comics to uh, actually written supplements. Uh, we provide a whole bunch of tools to help you with that, including templates that you can get started with formatting to make your project look uh, professional. Um, and also a whole host of images from our image archive. Um, so you can spruce up your words with, you know, actual professional illustrations. Um, and the way it works is you, you set it up and then there's a split, uh, you know, the, uh, the author gets 50% of the revenue that comes in from that and then the rest is split between the hosting company uh and, which is one bookshelf and paizo so and you will continue to get paid for that 
pretty much indefinitely as people are buying your material. So the one really neat thing about that program for both established and uh, would-be freelancers or uh, um, uh, ambitious, you know, wanted, people who haven't had a chance to really break in through our editorial department is there's really no gatekeepers for that. You know, there's some guidelines and things that you can check out at Pathfinder Infinite and StarfinderInfinite.com. But, you know, you can just get started on your own project pretty much right away. It launches officially next month, so you'll just take a look at the FAQs and stuff. But don't sleep on that. That's going to be a really interesting uh, marketplace and opportunity for people to do some really cool material. And frankly, you know, as much as we publish, which I think every member of our, of our staff can say is a lot, um, there's still a lot of stuff that we're never going to be able to do, you know, just because the format's not quite right, or maybe we already covered a similar subject matter, albeit in a different way fairly recently, so it won't come around again for some time. Um, you almost don't have to worry about us. And I, and I know I, and I think many of the other developers are going to keep a close eye on that program and see what's popular. And, and, and I think we expect to find a lot of new talent uh, through those programs. So um, a lot of what we're going to talk about for the rest of the, the panel is about how to plug in with these folks and some of the other great developers at Paizo to get you know contributions to books and in some of the, the Pathfinder and Starfinder stuff that we do. But I'm really eager over the, the next year and then into infinity, it is called infinite after all, uh, to see what, what y'all come up with sort of in many ways independent of us. So there's never been fewer barriers to entry. There's never been more opportunities to get involved with writing Pathfinder and Starfinder stuff in a way that, you know, people are paying attention to. So definitely please check out uh, Starfinder Infinite and Pathfinder Infinite um, dot com. So uh, I'd like to throw the ball back to the developers for a second and say, OK, I'm, I'm practiced. I've got a cool idea. Uh, maybe I've even tried some stuff out on the Infinite programs. Maybe not. What do I do? How do I get the attention of a developer? How do I build that relationship with a dev who's going to help to give me my first assignment? And then we'll go on from there. Like, what do you do when you get your assignment? But how do you, how do you crack that, that door open uh, to even get an assignment? Any, any thoughts there? I, th I think what you want to look at uh, is is uh, what kind of thing you want to be writing for, right? Do you want to write an adventure? Do you want to write for the Lost Omens guides? Do you want to write, you know, straight up rule stuff for one of the other hardcovers, uh, Starfinder or Pathfinder? Uh, and then find out who the lead development uh, on sort of previous books uh, uh, have done. I mean, obviously you're, you've I, one has assumed you've already read all this content. And it's 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 really got you excited for to write and, and produce uh, your own. Um, but uh, once you've uh, uh, gotten those names. Uh, you can, I mean, you know, uh, I hope I'm not uh, saying too much, but you know, shoot us an email, uh, get a con get in contact with us, say, oh, here I am, here's my experience, here's my portfolio with maybe links to some of your infinite stuff or what have you, uh, and uh, this is the stuff I like to write. If we we know who you are, it, it's the first step is letting us know who you are, I think, is the, is, is the biggest barrier. If we don't know you, who you are, uh, we're probably not going to be able to find you anywhere, right? Okay. Linda, Luis, anything to add there? Folks sometimes do um, some open calls as well, asking for interest on social media. And um, another another thing that comes into play here is um, is networking, getting to know other folks who are, are working on these books, um, because we do ask freelancers, hey, you know, is there somebody that you know who you think we should be taking a look at? OK. Yeah, Luis, in a, in a similar thoughts? vein. Uh, it, there are plenty of communities out there. Uh, Freelance Forge is a big one that I can think of uh, where you can reach out to other people who are various levels of experience in terms of, of writing for Paizo or, or other RPG companies as well um, that can get you resources or, or be your foot in the door for a lot of these things. You might be able to go on to these, say, hey, I'd like to get in contact with someone at Paizo. I don't feel comfortable reaching out to them directly on my own, will you, you know, on my behalf, kind of introduce me and, and let them know, hey, I'm, I'm so and so, and, you know, get get that conversation started. I've, I've had that happen a couple of different times with some of my with some really great freelancers uh, that were actually introduced to me by other great freelancers um, that I, you know, weren't on my radar, just because it's impossible to keep track of so many people uh, looking to, to do that stuff. And then I think each developer also has a different level of comfort with, with how they would prefer to be contacted on things. Personally, 
So I'm not, I'm not speaking for everyone at Paizo. Please don't assume that you can just do this with everyone. But personally, I'm because I'm part of a lot of discords and communities and, and all over the place on the internet. If you see me on the internet, you can likely send me a DM and say, hey, I'd like to try to write for Paizo. And I might get back in touch with you and say, all right, cool. If you're looking to do this, reach out to me here or here. Um, I ask that you don't send me any of your work or anything, but you can always just ask, how do I get started? What, who do I contact? What do I do? And I can kind of point you in the direction to, uh, to getting that going. Uh, it may not always get you anywhere, but I, I'm happy to at least, uh, you know, guide people to, to the right place to, to do that kind of thing. And okay, I think that's, cool. a, that's a great point too, um, that you don't, you don't have to worry too much about getting the right person for whatever you're working on. In Paizo, we know like who is the person who works on what, and we will be happy to pass your information along. Okay, so I'm putting myself in the role of a, a prospective freelancer. I've sort of figured out which dev at Paizo I should be talking to. Maybe I saw an open call. Maybe they reached out to me because they saw something cool that I'd done as a third-party product or infinite or something. That That connection has been made. And in fact, I have received my first assignment. What does that look like and what kind of, what does it mean? What's the next steps from that point on? Any of you can feel free to jump in on that one. So when you receive an assignment, you'll get, um, you'll get an outline, which gives sort of the broad scope of the things that we sort of expect to be true about that product. And that, that's kind of the list of like, all right, here, here's the parts that we know, here's how many words it is, here's what we know this kind of section needs to be co cover. And then the rest of that is sort of for you to fill in with your own with your own creativity. We also provide um, resources that are um, both resources and references for our own in-house styles and formatting and stuff like that, as well as um, as well as generally um, free PDFs of various Paizo resources that are going to be useful for you to take a look at. So I'd say that the first step is reading the stuff that you get from us. So you, you're familiar with um, both what the assignment is and also sort of the, the, the setting connections and things like that, that uh, provide the background for what you're writing. Okay. Do you guys have something to add there? I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the realist here for just a moment and explain that it's not all, all fun and games. Um, one of the first things that you're gonna receive is a contract from us, and that means you're gonna have to figure out a lot of financial stuff. And we unfortunately can't help you with that on our end. I mean, we can tell you, you know who to contact for questions and stuff like that. But each state is different. You know, each situation is different for each author. Um, so you're gonna have to take some time to learn a, a little bit about what that all entails and and, and what you're. you're kind of getting into uh, financially. So so be aware that it it's not just going to be like, oh, cool, I suddenly get to write all these cool monsters or, or whatever. No, like, there, there's some serious work and it's still a job. Uh, and, and with it being a job, it also comes with uh, deadlines and expectations and, and things like that. Um, and one of the most important things that we ask as a freelancer, regardless of your, your level of experience, if you're brand new or if this is your 40th product with us, is to be open and communicative with Paizo, we want to know if you know you reach a point where you're like, I can't come up with any ideas. Great, that's fine. We'll help you with that. Or I'm going to be late because, you know, weather was bad and my computer, you know, my power was out for for three days or or, or whatever it is. What whatever might be causing issues with with getting your work in or, or getting your work done. Please just reach out to us uh, as as soon as possible. We at ne are never, never, ever upset if something happens and comes up there have been plenty of times where people have had to step away from products and you know i, I actually can't do this now uh you know and that was a week or two in or you know part of the way in and and we were able to accommodate them find replacements or, or do whatever was needed to get that work done and then had those people back to write for our books later on anyway it's not like having to back out or or be a little late is going to Put you on the Paizo blacklist. You know, we're, we're happy to help you out when we can. We know the internal schedule about, and what things to expect, so we we can work with people to to try to accommodate as much as we can to make sure that you're still able to e either able to get this done, or, or we can get this done in, in, in a different uh, through a different route if needed. So, please communicate with us uh, about anything. And sometimes we just love to, to, you know, if you're just sharing like, hey, I'm, I'm really excited for this. I wrote this cool feat. What do you think? We'll, we'll also give you feedback on that. 
uh, about halfway through it in what's called our milestone phase and we'll, we'll, we'll happily answer your questions about like, oh, I was thinking of making this cool magic item or so on and so forth. That that kind of communication is great as well. Yeah, we, Comments you know, are great we, too. we yeah, we, we gave you this assignment, so we want to work with you, right? So if you're having troubles in any way, we just want to know, we want to be able to take what you've got and 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 use it and 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 show the world how oh, cool stuff you can write yeah uh i would just add on i mean you know bad news is preferable to no news uh from the developer's perspective we have a lot of different tools at our uh disposal to you know put a delay on this little project while we give people the time they need to finish it or what have you but not knowing really puts us in a in a bind so if you got bad news to share with us or if you know you're hitting an unanticipated challenge we've all been there uh you know perhaps even multiple times. So you're gonna get a compassionate answer. If you let us know that 25 minutes before it's due on the final day, that's sort of taking away some of our tools to be able to, to, to hit our deadlines internally. And that's a challenge. So you always wanna make sure that you're super hyper communicative uh, with your developer. Um, okay, so uh, I got my assignment. I've read it through, I've understood it. I've asked questions to the developer. If I didn't understand it, I've turned it in. I've turned it in on time, ideally. What happens next? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it's it's going to be very quiet from us for a very long time. <laughs> um, from the point you turned it in, uh, there's a lot of steps to go on between receiving the, the assignment and it becoming a fully finished product and out in the world. Uh, and there will be just a, a long time where you don't know what's going on. We're going through a development process. We're giving you know everything a development pass, editing pass, it's then late, later going through layout and you know all, all this stuff. And that takes weeks, it takes months, depending on the product. And unfortunately, you, you won't be involved with that process. As an author, we, we you know, your job is done. In fact, by the time that we're, we're still working on this, you will have been paid. So great, you know, good job. That, that's one, one good thing to look forward to. Um, but eventually, you will be nearing the, the time when, when the product will come out. And depending on the nature of the product, personally, for, for Lost Omens books, I do reach out to our freelancers in advance, usually a couple weeks or a month or so uh, in advance of the book and I, uh, the book's release. And I try to do my best to get that book in your hands and let you see what you've done. Um, but for the most part, you're, you're just going to kind of have to wait and, and see what happens. Um, if you are lucky enough to be in a, a large product project where you're part of like a group discord or, or a chat or something, you might be able to commiserate with your fellow freelancers and just be like, Oh, I sure hope my cool feet survived or anything like that. But uh, th there's not going to be much word from Paizo until the book is or, or the product is just out at that point. But once it is out, you know, you now have your name in the credits and you can use that to talk with other people at Paizo or, or other companies and say, look, I've done a thing. I wrote for Lost Omens. I, I wrote uh, an org play scenario. I'm, I'm happy to take on more work if it's more like this or something else. Well, one of the hardest things that, that uh, this, even past doing the writing and, and getting all your words in on time, uh, one of the hardest things is that wait. Uh, uh, after you've submitted it and before you can talk about what you have written, right? You know, we don't, we, we, we have these books planned so far in advance that, you know, when we have these, these big cons where we get to announce things, you know, months and months ahead of time. Uh, but before, before that gets announced in one way or another, you, uh, you know, we, we always ask that you keep mum about it. Uh, because you know, we, we're, we're keeping mum about it. And we're all very excited about all the stuff we're doing and we want to talk about it all the time. Uh, but there, there's a time when you can, and there's a time when you can't. Um, so, but then just like, but like, like we, we said, if you're on a big project that has a discord or some kind of chat, you can always, to do the talking with other people who know about it already. So that's one, 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 one steam valve that you can have a little bit of release, but in the most part, it will be once that thing is announced and generally, you know, you'll know when it's announced, we'll do a big thing or we'll, if there's a big chat, we'll let, let people know. Uh, and then you can start saying, yeah, I wrote for it. It's pretty awesome. It's going to be great. Um, and yeah, but, but until then, <laughs> please. <laughs> General rule of thumb, um, if it hasn't been announced via, like, it, whatever details have been announced via, like, an official Paizo method, like a blog or something like that, you're free to spread and share as far as you like. You're free to say that you're excited about working on things, but those specific details, you know, 
we um, sometimes things do change in um, in the process of design and development and editing, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you know that that there was something that you wrote that was like bad or whatever. It might just be like, oh, um, well, when we laid all this out, we realized that we had way more text than could fit because of the size of this one piece of art. So we found something that we needed to cut or, you know, oops, this is actually pretty similar to we realized this, this little adventure bit is pretty similar to something that came out recently. And so we're gonna we're gonna shift this a little bit there. There are a wide variety of reasons that um, that folks at Paizo might change something. And so also, not only not only do you sort of like, you know, protect the confidentiality of, of what's been released, but you also avoid putting yourself in a position where you're like, I'm really excited about this piece. And then, you know, that piece doesn't make it in. And then it's just a little awkward. So um, speak to speak to what's been said. And then, of course, once the product is out in the world and to the public, then you're you're free to to talk about what you did in greater detail. Um, I want to follow up on something I think Luis said, uh, which just to, to specify the payment, uh, the way payment works on this stuff is we'll pay you uh, for your work within 30 days of our acceptance of your final manuscript. So, um, so you're you're going to get paid, you know, before Paizo makes any money on the on the product actually, um, and so uh, pretty pretty nice, you know, quick turnaround for the work. Um, Historically, in this industry, there's been a lot of like pay on publication, which often the publication can get delayed. As I think you've seen with some of pro some of our products, for sometimes for reasons that make sense, sometimes for reasons that are hard to explain. Um, so uh, several years ago, we shifted to the pay on acceptance, which I think is just a a far superior and much more uh, creative friendly policy. So um, so it's really important to us that, you know, when we get that acceptance, you know, we ping the finance department at Paizo and then you know, blah, 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 a couple weeks later, you know, a check gets issued and uh, and hopefully we're on to the next assignment at that point. Um, so I did want to take a minute because because unfortunately we don't have any members of the art team uh, with us today and art submissions is a big deal as well. Um, all of the, the art that you see um, in Pathfinder and Starfinder products from a Wayne Reynolds cover all the way to a, a small illustration, um, you know, in the table of contents or something like that. All of those are done by freelance uh, writers, or sorry, artists. And, and we uh, employ a tremendous number of freelance uh, artists. And the appetite for new art that we need is, I think it is safe to say, voracious. Paizo publishes a great deal of, of new art uh, every year. We pride ourselves on books that are beautiful to look at as well as fun to read. And so great art is a really important part of what we do as a staff. And how that works is the, the, the developers um, will uh, write up what we call an art order or art descriptions for, for all of the, the art. And that could be anywhere from, uh, well, the original, the famous one is the original first edition uh, Pathfinder core rulebook art order to Wayne Reynolds, who we'd worked with for years and years was Valeros and Sioni fight a dragon in a dungeon, a red dragon in a dungeon. And he just took it from there because that's the kind of artist Wayne is. Other times, like when there's an illustration for a uh, adventure path or something where it's very important that okay, this NPC is in this specific you know pose, you know, in this room with this painting on the wall. You know, there's a lot more details. Sometimes those art descriptions can get uh, pretty elaborate. And then our great art directors um, at Paizo will communicate that material to their freelancers um, and then work through a sketch process to get a final. And then again, when that final is approved, then you get paid within 30 days. Um, and the really, they've got stables, just like a lot of our developers do, of like reliable freelancers that they've worked with before that they know they can count on, but there's always a need for new ones. And so the best advice that I would have to say an artist uh, who's looking at breaking in at Paizo is to put together a small portfolio of your best pieces, some of the stuff you feel really strongly about. First, before you submit to Paizo or any other company, take a look at the type of stuff that they do. You know, if you send us a submission, for example, that has just absolutely gorgeous black and white illustrations, we don't tend to publish black and white illustrations. So it really doesn't help us. And you're far less likely to get uh, an assignment than if you had public, you know, sent us a piece of art, say that you've done 
oh, maybe I'm going to test one out with Valoros in it or something. So we can see that you're capable of taking our sometimes quite complicated uh, characters and, and filtering them through your style in a way that still reads as those characters. And put together a few of those samples. If you have professional credits, make a couple of bullet points in an email and then send an email to artsubmissions at paizo.com. That'll go to all of our art directors uh, several times a month. They'll peek into that account, see if they're impressed by any of the stuff that has been sent to us. And they'll make assignments, sometimes cold, based on just awesome illustrations that people have sent us to prove that they are up to the level of quality that we're looking for. So if you can create uh, artistic stuff, and, and this would also apply to maps as well, um, if you can send some samples to art submissions at paizo.com, they will... Um, they're going to see it. And if, and if it works, uh, then they'll offer you an assignment. And I, and I also say it's worth checking back periodically. So let's say you put together a great portfolio of like really creepy art. You're, you, you know, you've got a particularly lugubrious approach to, the, to your style and you send a bunch of illustrations and, and you don't hear anything back. Well, it might be that it, in that point in time, we were doing uh, a book about clowns or something like that. And just that style wasn't what we were looking for at the moment. But that doesn't mean that the door is closed to you as a potential artist for Paizo. So uh, stay at it, you know, and, and keep sending stuff. I, I have seen over the course of Paizo's history since we started as, as a company back in 2002, I've seen people who started sending us stuff years ago that quite frankly was was not up to our publication level, you know, was a little bit amateurish, um, but they kept at it, you know, and sometimes they'll go to a con or speak with one of our art directors, which is helpful as well. Sometimes the art directors are able to give feedback, they're really busy, so oftentimes that isn't gonna happen, but keep at it, you know, keep working at it, keep in contact with us. Sooner or later, you're gonna get to that level where we need you to be at and it's going to match what they're looking for at the right time and you'll get an assignment so that's my recommendation um, for artists who are looking to work for uh, Paizo. I'd like to open things up to questions from the audience very shortly but before we do that I'd love to give the developers an opportunity to say any kind of final words on just the process or anything they want to add before we just start taking questions from the audience. Just to what you were what you were saying, Eric, I have a friend who who literally went through that exact process. He yeah. has been submitting and been submitting art for 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 a while now, and now you can see his art in uh, Malevolence. So it's pretty awesome. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Okay, dokie. Um, well, yeah, Linda. Yeah, if you so the uh, with our outlines and things like that in the milestone process and all these sort of stages that you'll see of intermediate communication, um, we we set out an outline of sort of these are the things that we think we're looking for, but there it, we leave a lot of things open for people to fill in. And if there's something that you think you'd like to do differently, please let us know and pitch it. We're always happy to have new ideas. Sometimes they won't work and a lot of times they will. So let us know, let's stay in communication. It is a collaborative process of creation. Awesome. Luis, any final words? Pre-question final words? Uh, <laughs> just don't be afraid to uh, submit, uh, even if you feel like you're not 100% up to, to the task. Um, none of us started at our freelancing career is 100% ready to go, you know, ready to be a developer at Paizo uh, proficiency. Um, I, I know I, I sure am still learning. Um, there's just, these games are, are, are very intricate uh, and there's there's a lot to know. And, and you know, writing isn't 100%, you know, cut and dry. The uh, creative process is doesn't have specific rules. So do what feels best to you, do what you're most excited about. And if you're excited about something, it typically shows in your writing and in, in your communications. And that kind of passion is the, the real lifeblood of, of this game, of these games. Uh, you know, we're all excited for Pathfinder. We're, we all love Starfinder. And it's the passion that keeps everything going. And we, we just love to have people excited for the game, people excited to, to do what they do with us, um, because it, it honestly shines and then it, it gets people excited at the table uh, to play the game and, and engage with, with all the fun stuff that, that uh, Pathfinder, Starfinder bring. Yeah, awesome. Luis, tell that okay, to my so brain when I'm staring down 40,000 words. <laughs> yeah, uh, fair Just enough. do it. Uh, no. 
I think, yeah, just to sum up, I would say, you know, be bold with the stuff that you do, you know, just do it with conviction, do it as best as you possibly can and understand that it doesn't need to be perfect. I mean, developers, the name developer means we're going to keep working on it even after you're done. And there's not any of us because we all write for our products. Uh, you know, almost every member of the, the creative team is not only a developer or an editor, but also people who even I do, you know, people who write for the thing. And there's not one of us whose work is not improved by developers helping us get it even better than it, than it, or it was. And that goes from the, the, the employee we hired yesterday to the, the poor old man who's been here since the day the company opened. We all uh, get, it, it, are improved by uh, development. And so don't be intimidated that you know your work has to be 100% publishable from the moment you hand it in because that's not true of any of us. Um, so just uh, just... I, I urge everyone who's interested to follow some of the, the guidelines these folks have laid out and really just take that first step because, you know, it, it does get easier uh, as it goes on and it's a skill and you develop it and you develop it with the help of other people like the developers uh, and, uh, and it's an ongoing process. So with that being said, I do want to transition to Q&A. We've been gathering some questions uh, all con on the Discord, um, and I've got some of those preloaded up, but feel free to throw some into the chat, and we'll try to get to those as well. I want to start with a question. I love the wording on this question, and I would invite any of the panelists to just kind of jump on it uh, with an answer. So uh, let's start out with this. In general, developers, do you have any tips on how to write adventure or setting material that is high enough quality to be worth publishing? I kind of want to write Cyborg Demon Planet for Starfinder, but I don't really know where to start writing something as a setting material instead of, you know, just GM notes. How do you kind of bridge that GM notes to, yeah, this is really something that Paizo might be interested in? I'll, I'll say something um, real quick. Um, I mean, uh, reading... For, for me personally, reading the stuff that I'm trying to write in the same in the same vein of the stuff that I'm trying to write, whether that's adventure or setting material, you know, especially for a specific company or just in general a, a, a just certain genre, I read that and I soak that up like a sponge uh, to a way that I can now feel like oh I can now do something in a sort of similar style or a similar genre, right? Um, uh, so the, that's, that's, I think that's kind of step one. If you get in all the words, you can say like, oh, these are how best house sentences. And then just start, like we said earlier, just start writing things down. It doesn't have to be publishable the first time you write it. It's not going to be. You're going to write it. You're going to rewrite it. You're going to come back to it. You're going to hate it for a while. Then you're going to love it again. Uh, and, and and then you're going to, and then, then it'll be good enough. And then you can show it to the world in some fashion. So uh, those are the two big steps. I mean, that's sort of almost the sort of generic writing advice for anything you want to write is, is, is do a bunch of reading and then just start writing. Okay. Um, happy to move on to another question, but if you guys have anything to oh, add. Yeah. I do, yeah. Um, I would say that um, when you're a GM and you're making notes, you probably have a specific group that you have in mind and you know what they like to do, you know what they're interested in, you know like what kinds of solutions they're going to try to approach. With setting material, um, having things that a wide variety of players would be interested in it is good. And um, with adventures too, like leaving it open for people to take multiple approaches. And another thing, another thing that's that's cool about um, published material is you don't have to have all the answers. Uh, it is wonderful to be able to leave little seeds and mysteries that other GMs and writers can pick up on in the future and spin in whatever direction they want. I want to jump in with an example of that exact thing, Linda, which is. Uh, and Luis, I think, can speak much more eloquently to this than I can. But, you know, one of the highlights among, I think, like a universe of highlights uh, in our recently released Mwangi Expanse book is some of the new ancestries in that book. And I think with maybe a couple of exceptions, uh, and I'll let Luis speak to it because, again, he's much more knowledgeable than I am. Most of those came from like a sentence of sort of throwaway, like, oh, and then this kind of creature lives here. And then this creature with very brief descriptions. And then years later, Luis and his team and the freelancers, the amazing freelancers who worked on the Moag Expanse book, took those like five words for each of those uh, ancestries and developed them into essentially little chapters of that book. Uh, I, I'll stop talking, Luis. Can you talk a little bit about how that process went? Because from being there from the beginning, when that was just, I think it was James Sutter, just a, you know, to see it grow has just been amazing. Can you talk about that? Yeah, um, we, I, this is a thing that 
I know Paizo has been doing forever because I saw it firsthand in, in the adventures I was running before I even started freelancing. It's just like, we're throwing just softballs into the air and letting someone catch them later, uh, be that the GM, be that you know a different writer later. It might even be the same person who first tossed it in the air, I think. Um, Sutter talks about a lot of the time he just comes up with an idea, has no idea what that is meant to be, and then later will be like, oh crap, now I have to figure out what I was <laughs> trying to set up. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff like that, specifically the Kanrasu and um, Goloma and Shisk in Mwangi Expanse were two sentences from James Sutter, and he gave just enough to kind of point us in a direction, says, you know, they, there's bone feathered shisks and, and golomas with their mini eyes and stuff like that. It's like, okay, we know they have lots of eyes. We know the, the, the shisks have, uh, we know shisks have um, bone feathers. I guess let's work from there. And there was a lot of back and forth. Sometimes we ask authors to just take an idea and run with it. Sometimes we, we do a lot of collaboration, but yeah, setting up plot hooks, setting up just open ended questions is is modus operandi here at Paizo. So that, that's a, a, a good thing to to set yourself up as, uh, as well for, for your own adventures, it is kind of putting out an idea, putting out a mystery, and kind of setting setting the, the line for anything that bites, you know, then you can follow that if you want. And you know, that could be uh, your, your own players uh, at, at your home game, that could be um, freelance authors later that get to come back to the same part of the setting or, or, or follow up on an adventure or stuff like that. So th those things are really useful and they're really fun to, to make. I, I like uh, adding a bunch of those during development just because fun, silly, exciting, mysterious hooks just are really easy to come up with because uh, as <laughs> Sutter explained to me, you don't have to solve them right now. They're, they're, they're there to just kind of be figured out later. That's great. Um, okay, uh, another question, and this is a really, I think a really good one. Um, is there a place that we can go to outside of Paizo to have written work passed through an editor or sensitivity readers before sending anything to Paizo or to the Pathfinder or Starfinder Infinite programs? And I think maybe before we start answering that question, maybe some of you could talk a little bit about what is a sensitivity reader and what is the value that that adds to the, the products that we make? Yeah, um, a, a, a sensitivity reader is someone that is kind of is particularly knowledgeable about a given subject. These can range from things like um, particularly difficult subjects, right? Like things dealing with, with mental illnesses or, or disabilities. We, we've, we've brought on um, disability sensitivity readers for Grand Bazaar, for example, um, to kind of follow up with our assistive items to, you know, just uh, other things that, you know, general feelings about is this kind of this language something that might be purporting uh, harmful stereotypes things like that we bring people on to to read things over to make sure that it's not gonna be causing any kind of um, situation where people are uncomfortable with, with our products or dealing with that kind of material at the table and when you know, that, that varies depending on the need of a product. It's not like we have a sensitivity reader for every single thing. We don't need a sensitivity reader to come by and tell us, hey, kobolds, come on, think about them more. Um, but we we are definitely keeping an eye out and our editing team and a lot of other people are helping us out with keeping an eye out on particular subjects that might need extra work, extra an extra set of eyes to, to look over it and make sure that the things are kind of moving forward in, in a, in a positive uh, or, or useful light. Um, as for your, your personal writing, uh, if you're looking to submit to Paizo, um, you, because of, of the way our contracts works, you're, you're not allowed to share any of your writing with anyone else uh, outside of, of this contracted state. So in theory, if you need someone to look over or would like someone to give you an editing pass and you're, if you're working with other writers on the same project, you can freely share those with each other. You know, if you're there are 10 people writing on Lost Omens, they can all work with each other. We can't go outside of that little bubble. But for Infinite, because it's you're not contracted, you're doing this for yourself, you know, you can have your friend, you can have a, a spouse, you can have, you know, a, a professional editor if you're willing to, to 
uh, go through that process and, and pay pay for that. Look over your products before it gets set up, and that that's you know you can do that however you like. There, there's a lot of different resources out there. Uh, I mean, the quick and easy way is just talk to a friend and say, hey, read this. Does this look good? Does, does, can you read this? Can you understand this? Great, great. Uh, any uh, other guy uh, folks have anything to add to that? We got other questions too. We can go. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 great job, Luis. Okay, so um, let's see. Uh, we mentioned this before, but I, I think it would be helpful to get a, an answer from from all three of you. Uh, do you think Pathfinder Infinite and Starfinder Infinite will be a good gateway in getting your name out there for possible freelance opportunities at Paizo? I think so. I mean, I sure you know it's. Not, not not the only reason we're you know doing this kind of thing, cause, but we want to uh, open up uh, uh, all of our uh, stuff to as many people, like, like you said earlier, Eric, to, to reduce these barriers to entry. But like, um, I'm I'm hoping we find some really exciting new authors out of this pro out of these programs in the future. So, yeah, short answer, yeah. Right. So that's one yes. <laughs> Luis, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's going to be impossible to be putting products on infinite and be like, aha, I'm going to get a thousand sales and be a, a rock star on infinite. And then Paisa will notice me and come to me and be like, please give us, give us your amazing words. Um, and you know, that might happen. I, I would love to see that happen dozens of times over. Right. I'd, I'd love to pe for people to get super uh, famous through, through their work on infinite and then transition over. Uh, but at the very least you can say, Hey, I now have a product on infinite. Now I can reach out to Paisa and point out to a thing and say, look, I, wrote a thing i tried my best to to meet the, the standards of, of, of necessary to get published and at the very least I, I now have a sample to to share to hopefully get my foot in the door there and and work on that and you know infinite won't be the only place like that there, there are different other publications you can work with you can work with third parties you can submit to wayfinder as well wayfinder is a, a great resource for for submitting freely with you know there's open door at wayfinder to to do that kind of thing much like with infinite so yeah please submit and and use that as your stepping stone toward towards contacting us great uh linda what are you thinking about infinite are you gonna use that as a resource yeah i think that it's going to be very valuable and every source that we have to for freelancers to make themselves known to us is valuable and um, right. one, and the thing about Infinite is that we get to see specifically how people are familiar with and play with the settings and the stories that, that we have. So we'll be able to see like, hmm, you know, this person's writing a lot of stuff about this particular topic and we're looking for an author about this. You know, I, I like, like that we said, we can't promise that, you know, like any one particular person would get noticed, but it certainly gives us a powerful tool for finding people. Okay. Um, thank you, guy. Uh, thanks, folks. I appreciate that. Uh, I can't wait to see what comes out of there. I think when you sort of decouple uh, what people are writing with our stuff from the kind of, you know, I think we have a very wide uh, range of what we're looking for, but it is a range, you know, and if people are doing stuff outside that range, it's going to be fun and, and interesting to see. And I think we're all looking forward to, to what comes out of that infinite program. I did have another question about infinite and I think I can just take this one, but uh, it says, Hey devs, love you all. A question for Eric, as you know, Oh, it's Alex Agunas. And I do know. So he says, as you know, I'm pretty <laughs> big into third party publishing. So infinite is exciting for me. However, I've chatted with other freelancers who aren't third party publishers, and there are a lot of freelancers who are concerned that the infinite programs wording encourages Paizo to effectively cut out freelancers by uplifting infinite words rather than purchase new words. Would you be able to speak to those individuals concerns here? Um, I think I can speak a little bit to those concerns uh, with the caveat that the program hasn't officially launched yet. So, you know, how, how it it plays out long term is is kind of tbd but we're not looking at infinite as a way to like farm out specific stuff where like oh let's pull these paragraphs from this book or that some of that may happen it may be that someone does like a really well received book about 
I'm just pulling this out of the sky, but taverns. And they decide, oh, I'm going to put this tavern in the city of Almas. And then down the road, we're doing a book about the city of Almas. It's not outside the realm of possibility that, that we might take a look at, at that material and say, why don't we put that in and, and credit the person? Um, but it's not really, I think, the main approach we're going to want to take. I think the main approach we're going to want to take with uh, with Infinite, and I'll let the devs speak to this because they're the ones who are going to be doing it. But I think the main approach we're going to want to take is like, wow, that person's got a really interesting and unique voice. Or that person really seems to understand how to mix a sense of the greater continuity of Galarian or the Pact Worlds with rules that really are interesting. And so I think it's going to be less about cherry-picking material for us than it, than it is going to be about finding writers who show that they're capable of doing the kind of stuff that we are commissioning on a regular basis. So um, I, I do think there will probably be some stuff that gets sort of promoted, if you will, out of Infinite. But of the, uh, the, the large number of, kind of goals we have with the programs and the things that we're most excited about with Infinite, I don't think that's particularly high on the list. If any of you all have something to add to that, feel free to do so. I, I mean, I, it sounds like part of the concern is that we will go through and, like you mentioned, cherry pick every paragraph yeah. and make a whole book for free by just <laughs> grabbing all that. And that would be a thousand times more work than just asking these authors <laughs> yeah. to kind of contribute. <laughs> True. Uh, so True. If, we, if we love the Almas Tavern, we're just going to say, hey, come write for us. We have an Almas thing. Add the tavern and then give us more Almas right. stuff or give us exactly. a dozen more taverns instead um we you know we might use that as a springboard to, to get you going but we're not gonna just uh take advantage and pluck a million sentences and, and kind of you know, remix a, a, a new book out of it um just because that's so much work that's not what infinite's for infinite's there for you to do your own thing it's it's not a a, a secret farming of, of, of words and um, if you want to expand and compile and, and, and mix up your words, work with other people and make your own 2E Inner Sea Taverns book with the Almas Tavern and New Taverns, go ahead and do that on Infinite. Collaborate, work together. Um, and mm -hmm. we, will, we will pay attention to that and we'll see, hey, we have now this dozen set of authors that do cool taverns. We can bring them in to do our own stuff and, and, and expand on it, or maybe take those taverns and give them an eight page write up rather than just the two pages that they have in, in on their infinite product. Yeah, if we see yeah. that one the thing... number one, get Linda. Oh, you, okay. Um, one thing that can certainly be said for um, the creatives at Paizo is that we're never gonna run out of ideas of things that we want to tell stories about. So like we, and Infinite gives the opportunity to tell so many things that we, we're not going to have space to tell about. So we're not sitting here thinking, oh, you know, we're hard up on ideas. We need to, we need to mine the words here. No, this is to, this is to expand the possibilities for the stories that can be told and shared about the settings that we are all passionate about. Jason? Yeah, I mean, Linda pretty much said it, so. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, um, with that, I think, you know, we're pretty much at the end of the hour. So I wanted to uh, thank everyone for attending the panel. Um, just to kind of circle things back, um, there is room for everybody at the table uh, at, in freelancing for us. If you've got the writing ability and the, 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 the ability to generate really compelling, awesome ideas, we want you working for us and and we uh, welcome you uh, to do that. So I will say it sometimes it takes a couple of tries and we've all been there too and we encourage you to to stay at it and uh, and if you can break through in a way that it, that makes your developer's life easier, then that's going to mean that they're going to reach out to you again. And that's kind of what it's all about is collaborative, creative effort. And so it means everything to us. It is, in fact, the lifeblood of Paizo. We could not do what we do. We certainly couldn't do what we do without our great developers and editors and art team and everything. But we for sure can't do what we do without the amazing freelance contributions from many people who basically just started as players or fans. Um, and that's kind of where all of us started and that and there's people in the audience here today who are at the very beginning of that journey who when 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 uh, we or others five years from now are having a similar panel 
you'll be the the sage veteran in the audience going, yes, in fact, let me offer some advice. So don't lose hope. Please put your yourself out there. We're always looking for more folks. Um, and, uh, and, and, and we welcome your contributions. And again, uh, to bring it completely full circle from the beginning of the panel, I, I just want to thank especially our existing freelancers and really all of the audiences through all of the panels throughout what's been a relatively difficult week for us at Paizo for all the amazing support that you have shown to each other and to the developers and the creative staff uh, at Paizo. It really means more than you can possibly imagine uh, to see such great support and, and friendship. Um, uh, and and it, it, it's really meaningful. And, and I thank you for it because it's like I said, it's been a dodgy week and it, it's really helpful that the people who are putting themselves out there and making the products on a day-to-day -day basis and really pouring their lifeblood into these products, that that work is appreciated and beloved by the partners who help to make it happen. So uh, on behalf of the entire uh, creative team at Paizo, on behalf of me personally, and all of Paizo's managers and everybody, that's hugely meaningful to us and we absolutely appreciate it. Stay tuned on some of those fronts. I know there are concerns that, that remain. Uh, we are not by a long shot done communicating with you all about that and about some of the, the ideas and, and uh, action items that we've got on the agenda to address some of those concerns. So uh, keep up the faith, keep up the support of each other and the, the brilliant and amazing uh, creatives, both on the in-house and the out-of-house side, who really make Pathfinder and Starfinder what they are. So I'm gonna, with that, close uh, the panel. Uh, I, I thank you so much uh, for joining us. And uh, we've got another panel coming up in two minutes. So uh, I welcome mm -hmm. you to hang out and, uh, and see what's, uh, what's coming next. So uh, on behalf of myself, Linda, Luis, and Jason, uh, really appreciate your time and efforts on behalf of Paizo and the people who work here. Uh, we love you guys and uh, hope to see you all soon. <laughs> Cheers.